we're going to do a macro that will be great for a page setup. And since I have to run page setup in all my different workbooks, I'm going to put this one into the personal macro workbook. Let's see how this one's going to work. Okay. So I'm going to pick on your developer menu again. And I'll pick on record macro. And we're back to the screen. Uh, I'll call this one page setup. Now, uh, I don't want to use control P here because control P is a uh, print, right? So maybe we'll do control E. I, I can't think of anything I use control E for. And now here's the important step I want to show you. I'm going to click on this pull down and I want to store it into the personal macro workbook. The, we're going to see that the personal workbook opens up every time you're in Excel for every workbook. So it'll always be available. In this case, I'll put in the description. I'll say this is for page setup. Remember how the description is optional. You can type in anything there. Or you can leave that blank. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. So the big, the big thing here is I have a different keyboard shortcut and I stored it into the personal macro workbook. I'm going to click on OK. We're now recording our macro. You can tell by the little square at the bottom. Now you would do your steps that you want to record. In this case, I'm going to do page setup. Good old classic page setup. So I'll pick on page layout and uh, I'll pick on print titles and that'll bring me into our classic page setup screen. If you've been using Excel for a long time like I have, I'm sure you recognize that screen. So in this case, I'll pick on header and footer. So let's say at the bottom of each page, I want the page number and the date, for example. So I'll pick on custom uh, footer. Okay. Now maybe on the left section, uh, I'll put my name. Here you would put your company name or your name, whatever you would want there. Now for the center section, perhaps I want the page number. So I'll click on this icon for the page number. I'm going to type in a space and then type in the word of and type in another space. Then I'll use this icon for the number of pages. Good. So this was the page number. And then I typed in the word of, then this is for the uh, number of pages. Now maybe over here in the right section, I want um, the date, which will be this icon. And then I'll, I'll type in a space and uh, a dash and another space. And then I'll use the time, which is this icon over here. So you could do anything within your page setup, of course. So I'll pick on OK. And uh, let's say I want to make sure that it's going to be portrait uh, and the letter size. So all that's fine. And let's say I want a half inch margin um, or how about a one inch margin all the way around. So I'm still recording my macro, by the way. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. All of that got recorded into the macro, all right? Now, of course, I can do a lot more with the macro. I could do more steps, but this will make the point that I'm trying to make. When I'm done recording my macro, I'm going to go ahead and pick on the little square at the bottom down here. When I click on that, it'll stop recording. Now, let's see if the page setup really worked on this workbook. I'll pick on File and then Print. And then here you can see it has my name at the bottom of the page, page 105, and the date and time. That is the date and time that I'm recording this uh, this webinar. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, you can see that happened on every page because I put it in page setup. Good. Now, the real purpose of the personal macro work workbook is that I can use that on other workbooks. For example, I'll pick on file. We're going to close this one. And of course, I'll save it. So that workbook where the original macro was, that one is not open anymore. I think we can all agree on that. Let's go to a different workbook. I'll pick on File, Open, and I'll go to, uh, here is a pivot table example. This is another big list of data. Now, I want to show you that right now the page setup is not there. I'll pick on File, and I'll pick on Print. 
You can see how the page setup is not there at this time. I'm not seeing the page number on the bottom of that page. So I'm going to close that uh, print preview. Now, on my keyboard, I'm going to do Control E. Control E will run the macro, which should do the page setup. So on my keyboard, I'll do Control E. I just did it. Now, let's see if the page setup is there. I'll click on File and then Print. And now you can see the page setup is there, except I did that in one step, which is to run the macro. Let's try that again. I don't know if you saw the real impact of that. So I'll click on the file and then close. I'm going to put this, this workbook away and I'll save it. Now there's no workbooks open, right? When, when it's like that, there's no workbooks open. Let's go open up a different spreadsheet. So I'll pick on, um, let's try, let me go to a browse and we'll find a different workbook. This time I'll use one that's called subtotal examples which is another big list of data. If I do file print, you can see clearly that the page setup is not there yet. So I'm gonna close it of the print preview. Now on my keyboard, I'll do control E, which will run the uh, page setup macro. Now I'll pick on file and then print and notice how the page setup is there. So imagine how much time that's gonna save you. That is just an example of when and how to use the personal macro workbook. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, close out a print preview. Now let's see how you're going to manage the personal workbook macros because it, they have to be handled in a different way. I'm going to pick on your developer menu up top, developer, and I'll come over here and pick on macros. Good. Notice how it says it's in the personal workbook. All right, you can see it says personal, and then I have the word page set up as the name of the macro. All right, let me try to edit that. Look what it says. I cannot edit a macro on a hidden workbook. Unhide the workbook using the unhide command. So the personal workbook actually is open, but it's hidden. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna click on OK. I'm gonna pick on cancel. Okay. So to unhide that workbook, I'll pick on the view menu, view. Then I'll pick on the word unhide right there. Then notice that the personal workbook is now um, available and we're gonna unhide that. So I'll click on okay. Now everybody, you have to look on the top of your screen up here. Notice how it tells me that I'm in the personal workbook. So it's actually a completely separate file that's on your computer somewhere on your hard drive, but notice up on the title bar, it does say personal. The personal workbook itself usually doesn't have any information in there. Usually you want that to be blank, as a matter of fact. So now let's see how we're gonna manage the macro from here. I'll pick on the developer menu. I'll pick on macros. Now, because we're in the personal workbook, it doesn't say the word personal anymore. It kind of assumes that that's the workbook that we're in, which is correct. Now it'll let me pick on edit. Now, this one has, you know, a couple dozen lines here. Obviously, what it's doing is the page setup. So there is the word sub. That means subroutine or subprogram. Then it has page setup. That's the name of the macro that I gave it. Here is the, um, oh, here's the, uh, the comments. Now, here's the comment that we did for the description. So that it actually puts that right in the description. Here. So that would be a good use, reason to use the description. It winds up in the code as well. Now, let's see what's going on with this. You can see it's talking about the page setup. Now, when it says the word with, right there, that means the next couple lines have to do, in this case, with the active sheet that page setup. So it's a little bit of a shortcut. When we have the word with, then everything between those lines will have to do with, in this case, the active sheet page setup. All right, so then there's a couple more lines. Um, so then I have another with, and then the page setup is going to be changed within all those lines. So in other words, it says with active sheet dot page setup, and then all of these have to do with the page setup. Here it has the left footer, right? There's my name. There's the center footer that has the page number, and the number of pages. There's the right footer that has the date and the time. Now, 
these must be default uh, values. I didn't change any of these other items. Right? It just it's just part of the page setup. So I'm just going to leave them there. I, I don't really want to mess that up. Um, I wouldn't really delete that code unless you're really really familiar with the VBA programming language because you know that those those things might be necessary. So I'm just going to leave them there. And then down here it says end with. That's going to be the end of that with statement. So they all go together. And then we have end sub. So this is the code that was generated when we made our personal workbook. I could edit that, of course. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and um, we'll add a comment into here. So I clicked at the end of that line. I'll type in a, um, a semi, a, uh, an apostrophe and I'll say, this will put my name, um, the page number, the number of pages, the date, and the time in the page footer for every page. All right. So when I go to the next line, Notice how that line turned green. It's really a comment because of that little apostrophe. Good. So now when I'm done with this code, I'm going to close out of this uh, window up here with the red X. Now, everybody, this is really, really important. After you're done with your personal workbook, you want to rehide that because if you leave that, um, if you leave it like it is, Every time you go into Excel, the personal workbook will open up again. And you, you don't really want that to happen because then you can, uh, you know, maybe uh, damage it. So when I'm done changing the code in the personal workbook, I'm going to hide it again. Click on view and then hide. And it puts that document away. Now we're back onto our other document. And now I'll make sure that I save. All right. Um, so if I try to pick on a uh, developer and then macros now see how the personal is still out there. But if I try to edit it from here, it doesn't let me, I have to unhide the personal workbook to get to that code. But when you unhide it, the way I, un the way I unhid that was I picked on view and then I said unhide, and then you would pick the personal workbook. Once you have that unhidden, then you can go into the code for the personal workbook. If you needed to change that. Once you're done with that, make sure that you hide the personal workbook again so that it doesn't show up every time you go into Excel. Now, I'm going to close out of Excel completely, and we're going to see, it's going to ask me if I'm going to save my personal workbook, which you do. Do you want to save the changes you made to the personal workbook? If you click yes, the macros will be available the next time you start Excel on any workbook. All right, so of course I'll pick on save. That was, it's really important that you do that.